Well, good morning. Uh, what we have uh, here today is uh, a classic uh, 432A power meter. And this one uh, apparently cannot zero. So I have some spare part uh, units. One of the key problems with this uh, type of meter is that the auto tune uh, section, I believe, is potted and it was only available as a single component. Uh, anyway, what we're going to do is take a look at uh, uh, the meter and see if we can find out why it doesn't um, uh, zero. Anyway, drink of choice today is uh, a coffee from uh, uh, Keurig. And so we'll uh, put that aside and then uh, start taking a look at this. But before we get stuck into this, I thought it would be uh, uh, maybe beneficial just to take a quick look uh, at the conceptual uh, diagram behind how this uh, unit works. So uh, to do that, I've got a printout from the, the manual. And so let's take a look. Well, here we have the simplified block diagram. And uh, uh, what this unit is, is basically the meter part here and then a thermistor mount that looks around uh, or splits out this part here. Uh, those thermistor mounts are uh, typically these guys here. This is a uh, 478A uh, thermistor mount. And uh, basically what those thermistor mounts have are two thermistors in them. They have one which is exposed to the RF energy and then one which is uh, a compensation mount, which is uh, picking up basically the ambient temperature and it's isolated from the incoming RF. That way, what the system can do is basically add together and subtract the effect from the temperature that uh, the environment is in so that you get a signal on the meter that is proportional to the incoming RF power. And it does that by combining them together and then producing uh, two signals, basically uh, VCOMP plus RF and VCOMP minus RF. And what we end up with is we end up with one set of pulses that are uh, have a width proportional to their value, and then we end up with one set of pulses that have a height proportional to their value. And they're switched in together to create effectively a uh, current that then flows through the one milliamp meter phase that is proportional to the uh, actual uh, RF energy that's coming in. And you can set these up and calibrate them such that uh, the units will register correctly. So that's the quick overview. Let's take a, a, a look at the uh, uh, auto zero problem and see if we can see it in the unit. I just had this shipped to me, so maybe it, uh, uh, it works. Uh, maybe it's fixed in shipping, who knows? Let's uh, take a look. Okay, so here we are. We uh, have the meter set up, um, we have our Mr. Attached. So let's start the, the setup process. Um, the meter looks pretty good in terms of where uh, mechanical set is. This is the first thing you do. So we'll take it past in counterclockwise mode and then we bring that back up to that looks pretty good. And then we back that off just a little bit uh, to free up the meter. Now, uh, how this works is there's a little slot in there and this uh, item, this screw basically has a pin in that slot and that's how it sets the meter zero. And so um, uh, you wanna back it off a little bit to free it up to make sure that the meter can turn and isn't being you know, driven by that set. All right, now that we've got that, um, we can set this guy to uh, course zero. And um, we can now turn it on. Okay, that looks pretty poor. Let's see if the course zero does anything. Okay, no, it, uh, it doesn't. I'm feeling a little 
a little bit of resistance in there. So, yep, it pretty much has a zeroing problem uh, as a set. We could have set the calibration factor to 100 or something. Anyway, the process you go through is basically set course zero, uh, get it to use that to get that back to zero. Then you select your range and then you use find zero to reset it. So let's take a, a quick look at uh, the block diagram again. And uh, we'll have a look and see um, if we can trace through where the problem might be. Okay, well, here is a slightly more detailed block diagram. Uh, you can see the, still the same basic components, the RF, the compensation bridge, where they're brought together, chopped, combined, and then uh, the resultant uh, pulse signal filtered and presented on the, uh, uh, on the meter. Uh, this is the auto zero. That's the uh, item that uh, I was telling you comes as a single component. And on the first bridge amplifier for the compensation item, this is where the course zero is. So I would expect that uh, there's either a problem in the bridge amplifier, problem in auto tune. Maybe there's a problem with the course zero uh, setup. Um, but let's take the uh, uh, unit apart and. Uh, do the first step, which is to check voltages. Here we have um, the meter in its uh, fully opened glory. Okay, here are the uh, cinch, classic cinch. Uh, these are 22 pin, I think, uh, sockets that uh, the cards plug into. Uh, very common uh, construction methodology for uh, the era. So let's uh, plug it in. Turn it over so that we can get to those test points. And then uh, take a look at the voltages. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is just check that um, we actually have chassis ground on that pin. Yep. So what we should have are the three uh, power rails. So we should have uh, seven, minus seven, I think, minus, th plus seven, plus seven, minus 13 ground. So let's turn the unit on. Let's start by checking the top one. plus 7.02, pretty good, minus 11.98. Now, I'm not sure if that is within spec or not, because it's a minus 13 nominal. So let's just take a quick look. Okay, might not be able to see it here. Uh, let's just push that over a bit, but the range is minus 14 to minus 12. So we were getting, I think, minus 11.9. Oh, let me turn back on again. Yeah, minus 11.98. So it is a little on the low side. Okay, where was I? Just a little life interruption there. Right, 12 volt, little on the low side, um, but I think it might be worth taking a look at the, um, the course adjust pot straight away, uh, rather than taking, you know, rather than going and having a uh, poke around in the power supply. So, Let's uh, take a, a quick look at uh, the relevant part of the circuit. Okay, here we can see the RF in the compensation uh, thermistor bridge here. And basically, course zero 
comes across that and then appears on pins 11 and 12 of the card edge connectors. So let's just pop out uh, card A1, which is this guy here. It's got the uh, uh, item on it. Now, it's not going to come all the way out because there's a little fin in the way. So let's just pull that out a little bit. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is just carefully turn this over and then sit it upside down here, resting on the card. Not the world's best uh, setup, but it is what uh, it is. So now we know that uh, course zero is here. So let me turn that all the way, all the way clockwise or anti-clockwise, sorry. Okay. And yep, we're measuring virtually, we're measuring pretty much zero. Now pins 11, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Oop. So if we go and measure that. Okay, 44 ohms. Hmm, seems a bit high for all the way across. Let's take it uh, all the way up. Hmm. Okay, well, that's bouncing around. You can see between five and 10 meg there, eight, 3K. So there's either something wrong with the wire to the pot or there's something wrong with the pot itself. Let's see if we can get in. Yep. and just measure on the pot itself. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get in there and get all this on camera, but let's see if we can. Can I get from, I might be able to get it from underneath. Hang on. All right, so we want that one. And this one, I think. Yeah, that's right on the terminals of the uh, pushing apart the terminals of the pot. We can see it bounce around and. So it looks like the little potentiometer uh, is dodgy. So I have one of those and, well, I have a spare unit that uh, is missing a bunch of buttons and controls, but it still has the coarse pot in it. So I think we'll go and uh, extract that. And then in part two of the video, we'll uh, replace that pot and see if that uh, fixes it or if we have to do uh, more investigation. Maybe, is it wiring? It was it the, they should be, well, should be a bit more riveted, but um, yeah, we'll take a look and uh, uh, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.